want to say praise the Lord this morning. It says in Psalms, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Can I count to three? One, two, three, and let's shout praise the Lord. One, two, three. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. Praise your name, Jesus. How many come to worship the Lord this morning? If we could stand to our feet here. If you're watching on Facebook Live, stand to your feet right now. Whatever you're doing, just stop and give the next few minutes completely devoted to praise and worship unto our God that we so love. Let's start with our God. Praise you, Lord. You are. 
presence of the Lord. How many need a breakthrough this morning? Can I tell you there's still a river flowing from the throne of God. His blood is still alive. It's alive more than ever before. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
to obey the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Jesus. The blood will never lose its power. Brother Robert preached an awesome message last Sunday about the blood of Jesus. If it were not for the blood of Jesus, we wouldn't be here right now. If it wasn't for his grace and his mercy. And one day he saw fit to look into our hearts. He saw what we could be, not what we were. And he loved us just like we were. Praise you, Jesus. opportunity to come back together once again you know we don't want to take these times for granted that we have right now the Lord is moving in the spiritual realm like never before I don't know about you but as a Christian I want to be part of that move and be in his will in Jesus name praise you Lord
Praise the Lord. Good to be in the Lord's presence this morning. Thank God for his touch. Thank the Lord he's still real today. He still loves us. He still cares for us, watches over us, protects us. I pray the continued blessings on your life, on your family, on our church family, that everyone's protected and safe and blessed abundantly. Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles this morning, we're turning with you to Leviticus chapter 17. How the message of the precious blood. I can't get away from the blood this week. I don't know about you, but I need the blood. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Verse number 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Then in verse number 14 it says, For it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall... You shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. The blood is precious. The blood of Jesus Christ is the most precious thing that's ever been on this planet. I thank God today for the blood. Can we go to the Lord in prayer? Father, I love you this morning. I thank you, Lord, for the greatest gift that man has ever received, the gift of your Son. We thank you today for Calvary. We thank you today, Lord, for an empty tomb. We thank you today, Lord, that you're coming again soon. Lord, we live for that day. We look for that day. Our hope is that day. But, Lord, until then, help us to live and walk and breathe under the sheltering power of your blood that our souls might be safe, that we might be prepared to make heaven our home, and that you might be glorified in our life. We thank you, Lord, for your presence today. We acknowledge it, we thank you for it, and we praise you for it. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. In the Bible, one of the main themes, well, not one of the main, but the main theme, from beginning to end, is about the blood. The Old Testament is about the blood. In the New Testament, it's about the blood. And today, for the redemption of the soul of mankind, it's still about the blood of Jesus. It still takes the blood to wash our sins away. You see, if we're accused, if I'm accused today of preaching a lot about the blood, I can just say I'm guilty. Because I know what the blood is to me. I know what the blood is to this book. I know what the blood is to every Christian. It's for healing. It changes our life. You see, if it wasn't for the blood, we'd have no power in our teaching. The Bible would be just another book if it wasn't for the blood. But thank God there's a Savior who came, went to Calvary, died for you and I, rose again on the third day. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, but His blood is available to every person, to every, to every family, to every, everyone on this planet can be forgiven and set free if they just repent and ask Him. I want to preach a little different this morning. I've kind of preached a time or two along these lines, and I may repeat some things. Some things are worth repeating, amen? We'll talk about the makeup of the blood in just a moment. You see, the body, our bodies, are made up of tissue, muscle, glands, bones, and a lot of other things. But all these things have a limited function. They are in a fixed place in our body. Amen. But the blood is different. The blood is fluid, it's mobile. It goes to every part of our body. It, uh, it's free to move to every cell. Every function that our body 
makes or takes, the blood is involved in it. Thank God. The blood is mysterious. There's a lot of things that even with our great uh, advancement in science and the doctors and their knowledge, there's still a lot about the blood that they don't understand that's mysterious. It's composed of elements and compounds and strange chemical bodies that they still don't understand and the function of a lot of the blood doctors still don't understand today. Understand part of it, but you see, once the blood fails to reach a certain cell in your body, that cell dies. If the blood fails to reach a certain member of your body, that part of your body dies. The blood is an important function. You see, every Christian, we're related to Jesus Christ by the blood he shed on Calvary. We are related to each other as brothers and sisters in the Lord by the blood Jesus shed on Calvary. I knew this was going to be a battle. So, with the Lord, we'll win. Amen. <clears throat> the blood of Jesus Christ is for our life, it's for our nourishment, it's for cleansing, it's for growth. And I just say today if you're not reading the Word of God, if you're not praying every day, you're malnourished. You're in danger of becoming weak. You're in danger of becoming infected with this thing called sin. But to stay free, we need to wash our minds and our spirits daily by the washing of the water of the Word of God. The Word of God, when we read it, it washes our mind and our spirit. It cleanses us. Thank God for the Word. It's powerful. The blood of Jesus Christ is what makes it powerful because it's the blood that cleanses us from sin. You see, because of sin and death, Jesus had to come to this world to die in our, in our stead. I read the first verses in the first two or three chapters of Genesis again today, and I thought, Lord, how did sin enter in? You see, God spoke and light became and waters were divided and from the earth and the planets were made and he made animals and he made the sea creatures and he made all these things. But on the sixth day, things changed. He said God formed man. Now when I was studying praying, they say that word formed is a potter's expression. You know, you have the potter has to get his hands in the clay to form it. God made man in his own image and his own likeness. He formed us out of the clay of the earth. But you know, even after he formed us, that's all we were, just a lump of clay. But in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, it said that God breathed into us the breath of life. He breathed into our nostrils the breath of life. And if you study it out in our text today, the life is in the blood. In other words, all we were was clay until God breathed in us. And we became, man became a living soul. And everything was great. Prepared place, a prepared garden. All they had to do was eat the fruit, the vegetables of the garden, and, pretend, and take care of it. But then something happened. If we're not careful, we assign Eve's fall to disobedience. But when you begin to look at what happened there, you can look beyond the disobedience and really find the culprit of the, of the, of the situation. I tell you, the culprit was pride. Satan said, hey, if you'll eat of this fruit that God told you not to eat of, you'll become like God. You'll be able to discern good and evil. You'll know you'll be smart just like God is. So pride caused her to be disobedient. And we're still battling that same sin today as pride was the original sin that I can find in the Word. God help us that we'll be like Jesus Christ. 
that pride will be something that will disappear from our life, the wrong kind of pride that wants us to exalt ourselves to be smarter than God. You see, the breath that God put into Adam, I believe, was the blood. The sin, everything in us that made us in his likeness, his image, he breathed into Adam that day. You see, when Eve sinned, and then when Adam went along with it, amen, we died spiritually. We died emotionally, and eventually physically, people begin to die. And because of sin, it affected the blood of man. Then we need a sinless sacrifice to redeem us and restore us from our lost condition. All through the Old Testament, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of innocent animals were killed and sacrificed in ceremonies to atone for man's sin. But it took Jesus Christ to come to die, to live a perfect sinless life. Amen. I'm just preaching to the choir this morning. He died a perfect sinless life. His blood was not tainted. His blood was without sin. If you study it out, it's the blood of the Father that affects the, the blood of the children. He was conceived by the Holy Ghost. He didn't have any of his mother's blood. He was sinless. He was guiltless. And when he went to Calvary and died for you and I, the whole plan of redemption rests upon the blood of Jesus. There's no other plan. There's no other alternative to be forgiven and cleansed of our sins other than the blood of Jesus. There's no other way you can be restored to a right relationship with the Heavenly Father other than the blood of Jesus Christ. So we have to take availability of the blood of Jesus. It's the only source, but there's plenty. It's available for every man, woman, boy, and girl. You can be cleansed from your sin. Jesus Christ can re stand and cleanse you and set you free. He paid the price and redeemed us that we can have a different lifestyle, that we can live a different set of mind and a different set of passions and desires and thank God for a new life that began when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, when I repented and asked Him to forgive me of my sins, new hope sprung up in my soul. Thank God that there is hope in this world today, and His name is Jesus. You see, I want to talk again just about the structure of the blood just a little more before we close. I can't go over everything that's in the blood. We wouldn't have time, and I wouldn't understand a lot of it anyway. don't really understand what I'm going to tell you, except I know that scientists have proven it's there. One of the, I want to talk about three ingredients. The first one is plasma. It's a colorless liquid. It's the vehicle that the blood flows in. The second one is platelets. I try to look up some information, but they know a lot about it, but they still don't know everything about platelets. They don't know what it does, and they don't know much about it. The other red blood cells. The red blood cells carry oxygen and food to every part of our body. You just think about how, how smart, how, what God did for mankind. We didn't evolve. We were created. Praise the Lord. I don't care what country you're from. I know the Tower of Babel, God separated everybody and gave them different languages. I don't know how everybody went, but every nation, every race of people on this planet if you trace your family tree back, it'll go back to Adam and Eve because my Bible says Eve was the mother of all living. Hallelujah. So from Adam, we, their sin affected our blood and we needed a Savior to come and pay the price and redeem us. The red blood cells carry oxygen and food to every cell of our body. Then it carries the waste back that the cells don't use and deposits them in our colon and the waste is purged from our body that the cells do not use 
What an awesome God we serve. Hallelujah. You take the day if the garbage truck were to bring our food to us, none of it wrapped up or none of it taken care of, the health department would have a fit. Amen. And we probably wouldn't eat it. But that's the way the blood does it. It carries, I believe, the blood and the food, the, the waste and the food may pass each other in the bloodstream. I don't know. But the red blood cells, what an awesome thing God does in our bodies each and every day. The white blood cells. They say there's four to 7,000 white blood cells per cubic millimeter. They say maybe 7,000 blood cells is the standing army that fights against everything that comes against your body, every infection, every disease. And when your body's infected, those white blood cells rush to surround it. Amen. And when there's a place on you and you puncture that and release that, it, what comes out is white, dead white blood cells. And when that's out, more white blood cells comes to clean up the battleground where the, the blood is fighting to protect you. I tell you, the blood of Jesus is fighting to protect us every day. It's the blood that shelters us. The devil cannot cross the bloodline. Sometimes in our weakness and in our passions, we allow things to uh, affect us and we allow things to come into our life that should not be there. Hello? We allow things to hinder us. We allow those things to cause us to have attitudes and outlooks and passions that are not according to God's Word. We allow those demonic forces to kind of launch themselves against our mind and we have thoughts that we shouldn't have. Hello? But can I tell you, the blood of Jesus Christ protects us. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us. The blood of Jesus breaks the chains and sets us free. The blood of Jesus keeps us free. Hello. Thank God for mercy and grace. Thank God that Jesus reached down and he looks at us and he knows that we're made out of clay. He knows what we are. He knows who we are. He knows the battles that we're fighting. He knows the demonic forces that we're facing. And he is on the scene to help us overcome everything that will come against our life. But we have to do our part. We have to stay in contact with Jesus Christ. We have to have a living relationship with Jesus Christ. We have to depend on Him and lean on Him. How many pled the blood this week over your life, over your family, over your children, your grandchildren? Lord, I plead the blood over our church family. Every day, God, I pray your protection, your divine protection. I pray that every demonic force that's coming against your children, your grandchildren, I curse them in the name of Jesus I command them to stop in Jesus' name. We're in a battle. We're in a warfare. And the blood of Jesus keeps us safe while we're in the warfare. We can speak the Word of God. It's our offensive weapon. You can use the Word of God to attack the enemy, to put him to flight. He can't stand the blood of Jesus because it defeated him at Calvary. Praise the Lord. He knows he's defeated. He knows his destiny is set. Hello? There's no way back for him, but you and I have a choice. We can choose to serve Jesus Christ, or we can choose not to. Book of Revelation is an awesome book. God's people are under attack in the book of Revelation like never before. But in Revelation 12 and 11, the Bible says there that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and when the battle heats up and it gets worse and it gets more vicious and it gets more intense, I tell you, if the blood of the Lamb can protect them then, it can protect us now. I plead the blood today over my mind, over my spirit, over my passions, over my desires. Lord, keep me safe. Keep me in line with your word. Help me to have a living relationship with you. Sometimes Satan goes to God and accuses us of things. I hate to admit this, but sometimes he doesn't accuse, he just tells the truth. I don't know if he can tell the truth, but we mess up. He sure broadcasts it, amen? 
Has Satan ever told you, you can do this, nobody will ever know? Amen? He's the first one to tell it. But when I do sin, I acknowledge it to God. I don't deny it. And I claim this promise. I learned this verse. I memorized it early, but this morning I'm going to have to read it because of the battle I'm fighting right now. Satan doesn't like you to preach about the blood. 1 John 1 and 9. I want to change a word or two in it. It's all right. If I confess my sins, I'm responsible for I. If I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me for my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. The last part of that verse depends on that first one, first part of the verse. If I confess my sins, a lot of people deny they ever do anything wrong. A lot of people deny they ever have a bad thought or a bad attitude. Mm -mm. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just have one nerve left and people get on it. If I'm not careful, I slip into an attitude that's not pleasing to God. Amen. I pray, Lord, I forgive them, but you get them. And the Lord says that's the wrong attitude. Amen. God, help us. Help me. You see, I like 1 John 1 and 7. It says, if I walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, Jesus Christ and I, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses me from all sin. Hallelujah. If I do my best to walk in the light as it shines on my path, then I can have fellowship with others who are doing their best to walk in the light as it shines on their path. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. The blood cleanses us. The blood of Jesus cleanses us. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I found these statistics I want to give you. In the New Testament... There are 290 references to the love of God. Now, I'm taking somebody's word for this because I didn't go through and look them all up. 290 times God has declared that he loves you and I. But in the same chapters and in the same verses, there are more than 1,300 references to the atonement. Over 1,300 references over that to the atonement that salvation can be had through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Salvation is real. Salvation is still real. The blood of Jesus still cleanses us from sin. The blood of Jesus still protects us. I read this uh, little illustration. So the preacher was preaching from this text. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Story was, suddenly he was interrupted by an atheist who asked him, said, how can the blood cleanse sin? The preacher said, stop for a moment. Then he asked the atheist, he said, how can water quench thirst? The atheist replied, I don't know how it does, but I know that it does. The preacher said, I don't know how blood cleanses sin, but I know that it does. 
If I tell you, I still don't know today, but I know that I was changed in a moment when Jesus forgave me of my sins. I became a new creature in Christ Jesus. I was set free from the power of sin. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a great big clap offering today because he loves us so much. He went to Calvary and died in our place. I praise him today. Thank God for the cleansing blood. The life is in the blood. And I'm not talking about the life in our body now that I'm trying to explain. I'm talking about spiritual life. Our spiritual life is in the blood of Jesus Christ and in a living, loving relationship with Him. What an awesome Savior we serve. I love Him today. Please stand with me. Father, today, Jesus, I love you. I thank you, Lord, for the most awesome gift that's ever been given to me. I thank you, Lord, for forgiveness. I thank you for cleansing. Thank you, Lord, for setting us free from sin. God, help us to make wise choices. Help us, Lord, to live under the blood according to your word. Thank you, God, for life. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Lord, if there's a person who's listening, there's a person here today who doesn't know you as their personal Savior, I pray that right now they would just ask you, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I want to live for you. And Lord, I know if they will ask you, you will forgive them. And they'll have a life-changing experience. Thank you, Lord. If we'll do our part, Lord, we're assured you'll do yours. Be with us this week, Lord. Watch over us, protect us. Keep us safe. I plead the blood over every family in our church and each one of their family members. God, every member that's lost, I pray you'd save them. God, I pray for old time conviction to fall one more time in America. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Praise God.
watch over you and keep you safe and keep you well and keep you whole and I know we can't see the smile through the mask but I'm telling you if everybody smiled right now that are wearing masks just smile how does that feel when brother Oliver was preaching about the blood and what it did in our lives I couldn't help but smile because I remembered the things Jesus did for us so next week they're going through a hard time you're wearing your mask smile you know you're smiling they may not but they can maybe see it through your eyes thank you jesus have a wonderful week